Good evening. My name is Liam Burns, and joining me to this evening is Patrick Troiano, and you're watching ISS News. Good evening. Tonight we're talking about food and space. Luke, do you know how much it costs to ship one pound of food into space? No, but I bet it's pretty expensive. Our reporter, Tony McGuire, is on the scene with more. Thanks, Liam and Patrick. I'm here at NASA headquarters, where the topic of the day is the cost of feeding astronauts living in the International Space Station. Let's hear from our NASA spokesperson, Mr. Cosmos, Cosmos Basley, for more details. Cosmos? It, well, it takes $27,000 just to strip one pound of food to the International Space Station. Wow. So why so expensive? Well, Tony, shipping via rocket isn't cheap. In fact, each of the three Americans on board the ISS need a certain amount of food every day in order to maintain a balanced diet. Wow, that sounds like a lot. Let's ask our financial expert from the Solar System Bank, Mr. Red Daniels. Sir, what do you think of this? In my expert opinion, this is a lot of money. By my calculations, they would need 5,000 pounds of food for just one year costing. Let me see here. Close to $135 million. This is a highly expensive program. Agreed, sir, but astronaut John Glendrick here says the work they're doing up there is worth every penny. That's right, Tony. ISS scientists are researching and exploring the possibilities of humans living beyond Earth. But they need to eat, and they need to find a way to do it without relying on rocket transport. As we speak, they are working hard to try and grow their own food, and I am proud to say that they have made great progress. Oh good, so no more gross powdered space food? Well no, they still need to eat dehydrated food in order to maintain a well-balanced diet, but now they have been able to grow some lettuce. It's amazing. Lettuce? You mean no bacon? No cereal? Not yet. They can eat things like pizza or turkey dinners, but the packaging needs to be conducive to ISS conditions. They're actually pretty good if you just add a little warm water. Yikes. Mr. Spacely, is this true? How will anyone be able to live at other, other planets at this rate? Well, we're working on it, but it takes time and money. This is terrible. Those poor astronauts. How can they focus on real research like space exploration if they can't even have real food? There has to be something we can do. Perhaps with more funding, the research efforts could be sped up. That, yeah, that would work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. More on this as the story unfolds. This just in breaking news. Here is our own George Jetson. Thanks, Liam and Patrick. Here is Leia, and Luke. Leia has an actual solution to put food up in space. What's your plan? I represent Team Neptune, George, and we are a team of robotic engineers that were challenged to make an impact or solve a problem in space exploration. The, the astronauts are working hard to improve the conditions in space, but we think they, should, they need some help. We looked up the um, cost to ship food via rocket into space, and our idea is to um, is to make money and donate it to NASA and to speed it up a bit. Since NASA is a government funded is government is a government funded agency, we had to get creative. Donations can be made to NASA, but they cannot be designated. But we are part of a nonprofit agency, Stellar Robotics, who can collect donations and forward the money to NASA. You said undesignated. Doesn't that mean you can't guarantee that the money will go to a better food in space? Good question. More research in general means um, means better conditions and food in on the space station. How could anyone think straight and make important discoveries without a decent meal every day? Good point. How can we help? Go. They can go to our GoFundMe campaign, Food in Space, and donate 
and tell their friends, family, and co-workers. It's easy enough. One small step for people on Earth, one giant leap for those in space. Back to you, Liam and Patrick. Thanks, George. That's all for tonight, folks. See you next time on ISS News.